Hello everybody, it is 2023 now, January, and welcome to the Book Hall. Well, hello again, welcome to the channel, thank you for joining me. It's now 2023, what can we expect, I don't know, but I will tell you that I picked up some books in December of 2022, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. First up, I made another stop at a bookstore in Tampa, Florida called Mojo Books. Mojo Books always has books that I like and that I want, but Mojo Books sometimes has those prices uh, where I don't want to pay. I think they might do a little eBay shopping and comparison shopping and mark their prices accordingly. Hey, it's their business, but I usually find something. This time was no different. Recently, as in I think November, I read for the first time this book by Gene Shepard, all in God We Trust, All Others Pay in Cash. And if you're not familiar with this book, it's the book that the movie, A Christmas Story, beloved by many, not beloved by many, but a very popular Christmas movie, one of my favorites. It's the book in which that movie is based on. Now, I read that book, and it's basically a series of memorable moments in the life of Ralphie when he was growing up in a small town in Indiana. <clears throat> Some of the stories are represented in a way in the movie, and a lot of them are not. I loved some of the stories, and some of the stories I, w I couldn't get through fast enough. But while I was at Mojo Books, I found this. They took some of the stories out of the book that would have been somewhat represented in the movie, and they put them in a book. And this is a hardcover, first print, first edition copy of that book. I figured, hey, I, I love the movie. I liked the original collection of first print there. This seemed kind of neat. It condenses some of the movie stuff into a book and has, a, of course, Ralphie from the movie on the cover there. So I couldn't pass it up. I hadn't seen it, didn't know it existed. I bought it. It was cheap enough. No big deal. Another thing I found there in a locked cabinet was this one right here. This is Nightlife by Ray Garten, and it is the signed... And limited edition from Subterranean Press. It's the sequel to Live Girls, which I already have, published by uh, Centipede Press and a very beautiful, amazing signed limited edition. But hey, I figured I needed this one. It was cheap enough. I think it was twenty-five dollars, so it met my it met my criteria for the price. Has to be low enough, or it has to be a lot easier to buy it at the store than for me to buy it somewhere else. Uh, anyway. I bought it and uh, pleased with it. There's no, no interior illustrations in this particular edition. It is signed, it is limited, and uh, it is a cloth-bound limited edition book like we'll often get from Subterranean Press. But anyway, I like Ray Garten. I like the way he, he attacks some common themes, but he does them in a very different way. I haven't read that one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Another book I stumbled across and I couldn't resist buying it because of the price. And then afterwards, it's like, why did I buy that? I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. I'm going to read this one if I can get it out of the slipcase. Tell you a little bit about this. This is a slipcased book, which always attracts my attention at a bookstore, by Michael Connolly called Void Moon. And I opened it up and it was a limited edition book. Signed by the author, number 283 of 500 number copies. Signed by the author. And a cloth-bound, high-quality book, foil stamp spine, from a publisher that I know, know nothing about. Dennis McMillan Publications, otherwise known 
as DMS, I think. DMS, yes. But Michael Connolly, this is this is uh, one of many books in a series, but it does start us off with a new character and a new series later on. And I own nothing of Michael Connolly. I've never read a Michael Connolly book, but anyway, it I couldn't pass it up. I'll probably read the book if I don't like it. I'll flip it or whatever the case may be, but it was an affordably priced limited edition book by an author that I recognize, and it looked good, and uh, that's that. Sometimes I don't have to have a real good excuse to buy something. Now, this one here, I took a trip across town, went to a Barnes & Noble, and I bought this one, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. This is a book that I read for the first time this year, and this is a trade edition, and you can see a little sticker on the cover that says signed edition. So I couldn't pass that one up. Like I say, trade hardcover edition from Viking. And here is the paper bound book. And I have the receipt still stuck in there for some reason. But it is signed in person by S.E. Hinton. And Sun Tup Editions released this last year, or limited edition versions of this book. The numbered edition I have pre-ordered, it is signed by the author. The artist edition I just got in the mail, I haven't opened it yet, a dinged copy. I regretted not buying it, and then I said, I'll just look for a deal. And in this case, I got a steel uh, Sun Tup Editions listed um, dinged copies, really cheap. And this happened to be one of them that was on the list. Next up, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to Christmas. I already did some Christmas book unboxing videos, but my brother-in-law gave me some books for Christmas. My wife dug into the Amazon, whatever, saved for later, whatever they call that thing, and she strategically picked books that she thought looked good, looked good, and told him this is what he's looking for. And so he bought some and sent them to me. One of them here I put on the list because it was recommended by, I think, Stephen Graham Jones, but I might be wrong. It was recommended, and I pulled it up. It sounded really good. Lyle E. Young, The Magpie Coffin, Splatter Western, and the artwork just looked so good. If you want to read about the book, hit the pause button. You can read all about it. I'm not going to stand here and read the book synopsis to you, but it looks great. It sounds very interesting. And for a trade edition soft cover book, <laughs> nice. The next one, I bought Sun Tup Editions, numbered edition, right here, of Blackwater by Michael McDowell. And I still have yet to read that long collection, six book collection. But I wanted the hardcover. I think this one was $40 on Amazon for the hardcover edition. Buying the original paperbacks one at a time. They go for a lot more money than I think they're worth, so I didn't buy them to read. So I wanted this hardcover edition to read, and I just hadn't pulled the trigger yet. Well, my brother-in-law did. So it's a trade edition hardcover of the collected stories of Blackwater. And so that's on the TBR list, or the pile that I call books, what gots to be read. Coming up, I'll get to that ASAP. And another book that was given to me by, by my brother-in-law. This one I know Stephen Graham Jones recommended this one. And it just sounded too doggone good. Camp Ghoul Mountain Part 4. And it's written like a novelization, but it's not. There's no Camp Ghoul Mountain Part 4 movie. But it really plays heavily into the, the slasher movie genre and uh, was highly recommended so it looked good it sounded good and i had to buy it this one uh, is another trade soft cover with lots of additional stuff going on in it so we'll we'll get to this one again asap it goes on the books what gots to be read pile we'll get that one going pretty soon it sounds neat the next thing i want to talk about are some books that i bought online and this one i ordered directly from mid mid world press they've got three christopher buhlman books available and i i ordered all three at the same time this one 
was already in print and available and they sent it right away. The other two are still in the pre-order status, but I'll show you them as they come in. I didn't want to do a book unboxing on this because it's over a year old now and there's plenty of such videos for you to see about it. But this one is called Those Across the River. In fact, Splink recently did a book review on this story and it made me say, dang, I'm glad I bought that. Uh, anyway, it is in and it's beautiful. I took the dust jacket off and you can see that iridescent, shiny, flaky, metallic looking, whatever you call that, cover. And the foil stamp black there on the cover. Just looks too cool. The spine. And it's got illustrations, although I'm not going to go digging through them all to show them all to you. But mine is signed by the author and numbered 350 of 500 copies. Now, when I placed the order, I also sent the request, can you match my numbers? Well, we'll see how they do. 350 though, remember that for me. 350 is what I'm looking for. There were some interior illustrations. Let's see how quickly I can pull some up for you. Again, just looks nice. And the artwork is by David Palumbo, but they don't just jump right out as I'm thumbing through. But there's a couple examples of the art in this book. Next up is a book that I purchased off of a Facebook book collector's group, and it is called Demeter by William Peter Blatty. William Peter Blatty is an author that I started collecting after I read The Exorcist for the first time. I read that book, and it immediately became probably top five for me. Maybe better? I don't know. Definitely top five books for me. Uh, Red Legion. I really like that one as well almost as much surprisingly but i decided hey i ought to pick up some of the cool limited edition books from william peter blatty not rated nearly as high as those two but uh interesting nonetheless and this is from centipede press i love centipede press i collect their books so how could i not pick up this centipede press book by william peter blatty it is a signed numbered edition and let's show it to you take the dust jacket off there's the cloth boards of beautiful centipede always makes beautiful books but this one has a illustration right there on the cover you can see it is signed the end papers very nice it is signed by the uh, deceased author william peter blatty in the back of the book and numbered if i could only find if i could only find a page all right, it is number 137 of 250 copies on a beautiful signature page there, signed in person by William Peter Blatty. And uh, just excited to have this one add another notch to the William Peter Blatty collection. One of the things of note is the very creamy color of the pages in this edition. Very nice. That's the kind of stuff I like to read. And next up are some eBay buys. And I think all the rest of these will be stuff I bought on eBay. Now, I've talked before about being a collector of novelizations for movies that I like. And this is one that I like. Some people love it and some people think it's not worth the time. But Halloween 3, The Season of the Witch, it is a rare novelization, an expensive novelization. And I was able to get one at a decent price and decent condition. The movie is one that's often scorned because it has no Michael Myers in it at all almost completely unrelated but i really like the movie and i was glad to get a novelization this next book is my very favorite book that's ever been written i re i really have no trouble saying that and you may not even like it so that's just the way it goes but it is the last babylon by pat frank and this is the uk first edition hardcover copy and it just don't see it very often i was able to get it at a good enough price, the shipping from the UK bumped it up there. The actual purchase price was cheap, cheap, cheap. The shipping made it, uh, was worthwhile to me, but I wanted to get it. And this is the, I think it would be the second hardcover printing of this book. But nothing as far as production goes to write home about. It's in okay condition for its age. And I'm just glad to get it. I love this book. I'd really love to see somebody like Sun Tup Editions or Centipede Press or one of the other folks that really makes great books that I really like to print and publish a copy of A Last Babylon. Again, 
my very favorite book. Probably the, the book that I read that made me a reader. I had read books before that, but when I read Alas Babylon, I had so much enjoyment and investment in this book that I wanted to read it again. And I did. I read it multiple times. But I started to consider myself a reader after reading that book. Other things that I got from the eBay, <laughs> another one that's nothing to write home about. In fact, it's missing the dust jacket. In fact, I don't even know what the dust jacket really truly looks like. But this is, can you see that? The Old Dark House by J.B. Priestley. And I wanted this book because I really love the movie. Boris Karloff film, uh, James Whale directed. One of my favorite old classic horror films is The Old Dark House. And I didn't know it was based on a book for years and years. But I picked this one up. And this one is the 10th printing. No dust jacket. Nothing special. But I wanted a copy of this book on my shelf. Now I do. And there you go. Sometimes it's just that simple. Next up, Easton Press. I love Easton Press. I've become an Easton Press collector. And the Headless Horseman, or the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and in this case, and other stories, is one that's been with me since my childhood. As a little baby, there were a couple things I was very afraid of. One was the werewolf. One was the Bigfoot, and the other was the Headless Horseman. In fact, if I would forget to close the closet doors in our little bed, my little bedroom, where my dad kept his nice clothes hanging up, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I would see the Headless Horseman standing in my closet with his white shirt or something like that. It scared me. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the short story by Washington Irvin is one that I really like. I know it's got some language in it and some statements in it that are not uh, culturally or even morally appropriate, but the story still for me stands and I still love it. And I watch several versions of movies based on that short story every year around Halloween time. Next up on my eBay buy list is Psycho 2 by Robert Block, Whispers Press. And I don't have any great editions of Psycho 1. And this one's so tight, I'm not gonna shake it out. But anyway, this one is a signed limited edition of Psycho 2. The first book in the series, Psycho, there's one published by Gauntlet Press that is a signed and numbered edition. I really want that one. But I had a chance to get this one, cheap, cheap, cheap. The book is okay, it's not nearly as good as Psycho. But I like Whispers Press, I like signed limited editions, I like slip cases, I like Robert Block. So why not pay a small price for this book right here? And speaking of, I stumbled upon this on eBay, again at a cheap enough price that I couldn't pass it up. Three complete novels, Psycho, Psycho 2, and Psycho House by Robert Block. But wait, there's more. This one is signed by the author. So... I had to jump. The price was low enough. I had to jump. Beautiful, bright blue Robert Block signature. And this is a book club edition. I don't, I'm assuming there was no other version of this conglomeration other than the book club edition. But signed by Robert Block, I wanted it. Finally, the last of my book haul for December of 2022 is a Jim Butcher book. Uh, a, one of the Harry Dresden Files series, a series which I started reading this year. I'm only two books in, but I dig them both the most. I dig it the most, man. I'm digging it, really loving it. I've got one sitting right there on my next up list, number three in the set. But this one is Cold Days, and it is book 14 of the Dresden Files. It's from Subterranean Press. This one is signed and numbered to 419 copies. It does have some interior illustrations in it. Let's see if I can quickly pull some up, throw them out there for you. It is illustrated by Vincent Chong, and you can see the illustrations are smaller than the pages, so they don't just jump right out as you're flipping through. But there's an example of the Vincent Chong artwork for this Cold Days Subterranean Press limited edition. So another eventful book haul session, December of 20, 2022. 
I got some great stuff for my collection, in my opinion, some great stuff anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. I hope 2023 treats you well. That's all the lies I can think of at the moment. So, say la vie, baby. Did it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my video. Today, I don't know. <laughs> I messed up. I messed up. Hey, shark, say something. Okay, let me put on my thinking hat. Okay. How do you like my books?